So here is a fun looking synthesis. We start with this bromocyclohexane and we are going to be adding a new carbon-carbon bond and also creating a double bond over here in the ring. So how would we do that? Well, let's use the retrosynthetic analysis. First of all, we have our double bond. We normally create double bonds via the elimination reaction which means that the predecessor for that elimination reaction should look something like that, where X is some sort of a living group. Now, the premier way of making carbon-carbon bonds within the scope of our course is going to be via the Grignard reaction, which means that the living group that we have here is going to be an OH group. And the elimination here is going to be a simple E1 style elimination with something like sulfuric acid and heat. Now, when it comes to my alcohol, I can make either of these alcohols via the Grignard reaction using the same Grignard reagent. The molecule on the left I can synthesize by using the epoxide plus the Grignard reagent, while the alcohol on the right can be synthesized if we use a ketone plus the same propyl magnesium bromide. Now, the epoxide can be easily made from the corresponding alkene using something like MCPBA, and the alkene we can easily make from the starting material via a simple E2 elimination reaction. While our alternative involving the ketone would have to go through the alcohol, which can be converted to our ketone using PCC or, frankly, any other oxidation uh, reaction that you like, it really doesn't matter in this case, and the alcohol is going to be coming from our starting material via a simple substitution reaction with water. Which of these two synthetic pathways do you like the most? Let me know in the comments!